Hi, this is Pam Hanchu from Revival's Fiber Arts and Gatherings bringing you your next class. So tonight we're going to do Mod Podge and I am coming to you from my shop. Got the office open, still working on the inside of the building, but hopefully we'll be open as soon as possible and we'll start rolling on classes here. Anyway, you will have gotten from the library a box like this. And inside this box is fabric. You'll have Mod Podge glue. And you'll have these gnarly looking paintbrushes, which I've used for Mod Podge before. So once we're done with this class, please feel free to just toss it out. No big deal. Um, they're kind of ready for the recycle anyway. And you'll have received a business card so that you know how to reach me and where the shop is. Anyway, what you're going to need on your end is a bowl. And I chose a really nice big bowl for mine because I have enough fabric to do it. Um, each of the boxes, you should have enough to do a fairly decent sized bowl. You're also going to need plastic wrap of any kind. I got this over at Ollie's. Um, and if you're really wanting to stay kind of glue free, maybe some gloves, but honestly the Mod Podge, you can just wash it off with soap and water. It's no big deal at all. Now what we're going to do first is we're going to look at our fabrics. Now I chose a cookbook and all of my fabric is cookbook related. Butterflies, because butterflies are very important to our food, food chain. They are what we call pollinators and they make sure that plants get pollinated so that we have tomatoes and we have cucumbers and we have wonderful flowers and things like that along with hummingbirds and bees they're very important so you want to remember those little guys now I got oh and I'm not happy unless I have a flamingo so these little guys eat brine shrimp and that's what gives them their really pretty pink color it's their it's all in their diet Wish I could say it's all in my diet, but yeah, maybe it is. Um, so, my box was a cookbook. Now, the boxes that you that you got to, to choose from, you've got um, Huckleberry Finn, you've got The Odyssey by Homer, you have Don Quixote, there's some, um, oh my gosh, Harry Potter, uh, Charlotte's Web, there's all kinds of boxes. There are 10 of them at the 10 kits. Now the cool thing is I basically went through those books. I've read them myself. I love them all. Uh, and I chose fabric based on something I found in the book. Now if you really want to do this as a scavenger hunt, you can Mod Podge your bowl, go to the library, check out the book, and read it and see if you can identify what fabric goes where in the book. So there's my scavenger hunt for you. I really hope you take me up on it because I love reading and I love the library and books are so important. And there's nothing better than the feel of a hardcover book or a soft cover book, opening it up and flipping through those pages. So here we go. Now, first things first, put our fabric in a little stack there and get your Mod Podge ready. Take your saran wrap and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to cover this bowl with your plastic wrap. Just like this. Because we want the shape of the bowl but we don't necessarily want to glue the fabric to the bowl. And it's going to be important to put the, to put the plastic on here to to take care of that issue. Now, in the shop I use Saran Wrap. Right now I'm using the Press and Seal because it works really well and that's kind of my go-to for a lot of things. Um, it'll take lint off clothes. It's really nice if you're trying to um, get little bits of things off of off of, the, off of um, projects, if you want to straighten them up and make them look nice. Okay, so 
So there we go, right? There's my bowl. Then what I'm going to do with the Mod Podge, so we're going to open this little thing up. These cups are pretty tight, so you should be good to go. And worst case scenario, if you run out, just use a little bit of Elmer's glue and it'll dry clear too. And it won't hurt anything. It's kind of the same sort of stuff. But take your Mod Podge, just like this, and start painting the saran wrap. Just like that. And I'm going to start with the top and just give it a nice little dose of it. Doesn't hurt anything. Now if you want to, you can actually organize the fabrics that you want to start with. Now, I will tell you that if you want to have, if you want to see the pictures on the outside of the bowl, make sure that your fabric is laid down like this. If you want to see them on the inside of the bowl, you're going to put the print down like that. I have two of these little guys, so we're going to do it both ways here, I believe, for me. I'm going to do one on the inside. I'm going to lay that on there and push it in. Then we're going to take the Mod Podge, and we're going to glue that down, right? And then I'm going to take the other one that was cut, and I'm going to put it on top of it like that. So not only do I see that really pretty blue pattern on the outs or on the inside of the bowl, but I will see it on the outside as well. All right, Mod Podge again. And we just keep going just like that. And when you're layering it, it's going to look like that. So, no worries if you put two pieces of fabric on top of each other, just make sure you Mod Podge between them. You're golden, no worries. All right, so let's just keep going. I um, am actually holding classes through the library and, well, at their spot anyway. I'm setting the classes up here, but um, we're holding them at the library because the shop's just not ready for interior classes just yet. It will be soon, and I'm looking so forward to it, I can't even begin to tell you. It's really difficult when you're trying to, to do a business and you can't use your space. It's no fun. All right, now, this is a pattern, the flamingos. You don't want your flamingos upside down or, or whatever pattern else that you find that, that you want to have it looking up, so make sure that you run it feet first to the bottom and we just mod podge that on there just like this and what will happen is when you are done and you flip this over your images will be the right way so you won't have to worry about you know did I do this right or did I not do this right or am I missing something that kind of thing it's, um, it's really all on what you want it to be. Now, we just had some classes not too long ago. We did piecing on the patio. And piecing on the patio is a class to learn how to, um, how to quilt. And how to quilt by doing it by hand. Which is the way that they used to do it a long time ago. People didn't have the sewing machines we have now, and the only way they could do it is by hand work, and there's nothing wrong with it. It lasts just as long, and I have to tell you, it's some neat stuff. So the ladies that were in the class made um, nine patch blocks. They made two of those, put them together, and they made a table runner for their home, and they all did a great job. They really did, and everyone got to choose their own colors, and it was a lot of fun. Now, this piece has all those wonderful little hearts with the writing on them. I want to see it on the outside, so we are going to do it just like that. See? 
and you just press it down and where you don't have Mod Podge already on you just go ahead and keep going now when we did this at Acacia the kids really had a good time they um, and they made some neat bowls these will take a couple of hours to dry and even better if you wait for overnight and um, and you'll have a really neat looking bowl but they had a lot of fun with it and it didn't take them too long it's a it's a nice quick project especially for kids now these bowls will last a long time they um, let's see here you can't you can't wash them <laughs> so don't try if you do you're gonna lose you'll end up with a pile of, of washed fabric in your washing machine or your sink or whatever you choose to, to do uh, yeah that's that would not be good but um, we're gonna do this like that because this one has all kinds of veggies on it I love vegetables they're the best well wow. I'm also a red meat fan, so it's all good. <laughs> all right, Mod Podge it down. You're going to have lots of pieces that are multiple sizes, different shapes. Um, the fun thing is just going to be deciding how you want them on the bowl. Now, I'm doing everything facing out except for that little center section. Um, and I'm already running out of Mod Podge because I have a big bowl. Now, so I would say use a medium size to small bowl and you'll have plenty of Mod Podge. If you don't think you're going to, let the library know and we'll work on making sure that you get some extra. It's not a big deal. Promise. Okay. I will be right back because I need to get more Mod Podge. So couple seconds <clears throat> I know I didn't even give you good music to listen to sorry no elevator music here And like I said, if you have white glue at home, it's going to do the same thing as the Mod Podge. It's going to dry. We, um, I've actually mixed this before with, um, with a regular glue. And let's see what we're doing here. And it seemed to work okay. Didn't have any issues anyway. So, and you just keep slathering it on. And I love food. Doesn't always love me back, but I love food. So, let's see. I don't want to do it that way. I want to. Sometimes you may have to rip them. All you need to do is make just a tiny little notch. And then, well, you're supposed to be able to rip the fabric. My notch wasn't good enough. So, there we go. All right. It worked! Magic! I'm so happy. Okay. All righty then. I'm putting this one right here. And let's see. It's got all kinds of hearts on it, so I'm putting it close to the other hearts. And You know, most families get together over meals. So, my family's no different. And there are things that they like to have, and I like to fix them for them. And, you know, it's, it's a wonderful thing, being able to provide for your family in that way and just have a nice little meal and, and everybody together and just enjoying it. There's a lot to be said for that. Not enough family in the world, I think. All right, my next choice, 
See, when I told you that the pieces were all different, they really are all different. And I am going to put these over here. Now, you may want to make, you, well, you may want to um, use some wax paper on your table or wherever it is that you're going to do this, just to kind of keep the mess from being too, too messy. And um, it'll, it'll make your cleanup a ton easier. So that's all important because you really don't want to make a mess and then upset the apple cart with, with the mess that you made. Now, cookbooks are an interesting kind of a book. You can find all kinds of, it, of neat tips and tricks and things like that. And I have to say, I've actually found some cookbooks from like the 1940s, 1930s, some of those vintage cookbooks are fabulous. You will have recipes in there for um, all kinds of really, really wonderful, wonderful stuff. And there were, I've found things that have helped me make creams and just vintage kind of desserts. Let's see. I grew up with that, uh, what did they call it, sunshine salad, and my husband thought it was disgusting, but, you know, not everybody, and that tells you, not everybody has the same taste buds as the next person, and you always have to figure that in, but those were really, really good salads, and it's orange jello lemon jello and you put in shredded carrots and crushed pineapple and you just and it's just a really light refreshing kind of a summer salad and they used to take those and to different carry-ins you know so if you didn't grow up with it you're probably thinking I don't know about that but let me tell you it's some good stuff and now I didn't grow up with um, sugar cream pie. I'd never even heard of it before until we moved to Indiana. And I'll tell you what, the first time I tasted it, I was sold. It's really, really good. And it's really, really fattening. And I'm okay with that. Now, I don't have any help tonight with the camera, so I'm... I'm out of the, the little visual area there for a couple minutes, and I apologize for that, but um, yeah, that's just me. Now this fabric are martini glasses with a little olive in them, and I am not a drinker, but it's a neat piece of fabric. So, I am a Coca-Cola girl. Anyway, more about the church. We are, we, well, we have been doing, I've been doing, um, weekly art programs for the kids and this summer, just to kind of give them something to do. And I decided that that program is going to be free year-round. I've been getting, not only do I get my fabrics, people give me fabrics and things like that for the, the shop, I've also been getting supplies that you could use for the kids, for like crayons and markers and stuff like that. And I personally think that that's a great thing. And I decided that the kids need to have, they need to have something to do. They need something of their own. So... Um, I was, I decided that that program, because I'm getting as much as I am, it's going to be free and it has to be. I want kids to understand exactly how important the arts are. You know, Michelangelo 
was known for the Sistine Chapel, but the inventions that that man created are incredible. His drawings on flight and his um, Vitruvian man, it was, it's all in just amazing stuff. And there are people who would not have the understanding of mathematics without art. Because if you think about all of the things that had to be in place for the artists to do what they were doing, you could see that they really needed to have an education in that, at least, at least mathematically speaking. They had to have the right ratios, the right proportions for things, and I, I truly believe that without the arts, children will have a hard time learning. It just, I think it sets them up in a good way to be able to process things that they, other, they wouldn't otherwise be able to. And it's, it's important. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Anyway, I'm almost done here. Um, and because like I said, my bowl is, is, is very large. I'm having to use extra. Uh, now it all looks white on the outside right now. I promise that when it's all said and done, this will clear up. It'll look amazing and you'll have a really neat project. Now, like I said before, you cannot store wet items in it and you can't wash it. But if you take really good care of this, it will last. A very very long time and even more so if you take the fabric and you just keep layering it on and um, that's what I'm doing right now I'm just layering and hitting places where I see that I didn't have enough um, or that I need to add more fabric and it'll be sweet I really hope that you enjoy the book choices I had um, I can remember reading all of those books and some of them are classic and more for a classical education which I think everybody should have the opportunity to actually take a look at them. Um, the, uh, the Odyssey by Homer is incredible and that, book, that story is thousands of years old. And I know that it's, um, it may not seem all flash and fancy because it's in a book or because it was written so many thousands of years ago. But if you think about some of the things that are going on today in the world and you look at these books, some of them actually mirror things that were, that are, that were happening then that are similar to what we're going through now. I mean, they had plagues, and they had wars, and people were still people, and they reacted the same way, and, you know, it's, it is what it is, guys, but I, um, I really, really hope you do give the books a chance. I, I thought long and hard about it. I looked at um, books that were on lists of important to read, that kind of thing, before I made my choices. And I know that from when I was growing up, the book lists have changed, you know. Um, I could have put To Kill a Mockingbird in there by Harper Lee. I did not. And because I think that's really hard to try and work through the symbolism and work through the issues that are present in that book. And I just, it's just kind of, I really want you to take a look at them. I really want you to try and, and give a shot reading them. They really will give you a lot of, um, They'll give you so much. And they'll make your education a lot better. It's...
books that were written in the past, you know, they're not, a lot of them aren't politically correct today, but they give you an, a visual into what it was like. And it's really important that you remember we're at the place we are because we learned over time to avoid the things that were going on in those books. I mean, we're not perfect. We're still learning, but we're a young country. And I think that it's important to remember that, you know, by European standards, I think we're just like teenagers or something, if that. I don't, we might be in the teenage stage, but, um, because they've been around for hundreds of years compared to ours. And our forebears, oops, more, left Europe because they wanted freedoms. They wanted religious freedoms. They wanted to be able to practice their religion and they weren't being allowed that where they were at. So when you're starting a country on a premise like that, you can't please everybody and you're gonna do stupid things. But if you look at how it is when you grow up, when you grow up, we're taught what we're taught by our parents and we act a lot the way our parents have taught us to. Now, because of history, my parents learned and I learned as a parent, my children are parents now, and they don't, tr they don't raise their children the same way because there are things that I did that they didn't like. And, you know, you got to give, you got to give us room to grow. You do. That's my, my lecture for the night. And we, I just see so many people unhappy and I just, it just makes me sad to think that we forget where we came from. We forget where we're, where we're capable of reaching. And, um, but there's still hope. I know COVID's driven everybody bonkers. It's not, it's not my idea of a fun time, let me tell you. Um, yeah, I want to do this one this way. But we're learning. Just try not to be mean to people about their choices. Their choices are different than yours. Remember that we live in a country that has given us the freedom to make those choices. And, you know, sometimes we need to allow each other to grow. So, anyway, I am... Hmm, I think I am done with my little thing here. I want to put this last piece on, but I don't know where I'll put it. Um, okay, I'm not going to put this piece on. I'll just leave it be. But when you're finished, doesn't matter if you have any more of your Mod Podge, just take it and slather it over it. And just keep, just use all of it. And then take that squirrely little brush and throw it away. Now you're going to end up with these little <laughs> strings. And I'm going to go through and pull mine and take some scissors and trim some things. So that it lays flat and I don't have stuff kind of everywhere. Um, that's just my little problem with my little version of OCD, I guess. Um, such as it is. But... Yeah. Your mess will clean up easy. It's just soap and water, not a big deal. And like I said, you're going to want to let this sit at least overnight. And if you're doing this during the daytime, you can let it dry for like, I don't know, two or three hours maybe. Just go back to it. And if it feels dry and it's not tacky, then you're good. But what you're going to do is you're going to pull this, you're going to bring your bowl upside down, or right side up actually, because we're already upside down. Bring your bowl right side up, lift the bowl out from the inside of the um, saran wrap, and if you have 
put saran wrap around the outside edges of the under the lip just pull it away a little bit not even an issue and you'll be good to go and you should have a really nice bowl shape now the the rim may be a little wavy like this because of your with the way you placed your fabric <laughs> oh but you can trim those with scissors it'll be great you can store keys and little odds and ends i think i'm going to use this here at the shop for something maybe some little flyers or something i haven't decided quite yet but i am going to be using it and um maybe down in the kitchen now in case you didn't know the building is a fiber arts education and maker space so we will be teaching classes and i mean all kinds of classes it's not going to be um well let's see knitting crocheting we're going to do quilting sewing um i teach traditional rug hooking but i have teachers for needlepoint for um let's see silk ribbon embroidery there's several different types of things but all of it has to deal with a cloth fiber of some type and um once the downstairs is done, I'm going to have a dedicated dye kitchen so you can come in, you can learn how to dye fabrics, and I will have an area so that I can um, teach people how to recycle old wool and how to pick it from like yard sales and um, Goodwill and places like that. Or even if you have some old wool that you that you have at home, um, the suits and things that you're not using and you just have no use for anymore. I'll teach you how to tear all those down and use them for rug hooking or wool applique. They can still be used, so that's okay. Doesn't matter. Um, now, when am I going to have all this done? I'm hoping for uh, at least, let's see, we're in August now. School's already started. I am hoping for this time next year to have the shop open and functioning. And um, I'm looking forward to having everybody come and visit. I'll have a little coffee area upstairs. I'll have a coffee area downstairs. There's going to be um, a little gift area. We're going to do consigned, consigned work from different people here in, here in uh, Greentown. And you'll have to pass a jury. So if you're, if you're a maker, uh, bring your stuff down. I will give it to our lady on the, the committee that's going to take care of that for me. And they will look at it and see whether whether it's going to work in or not and give you an honest critique things that you may need to change or not change or whatever but um, we're going to have all kinds of really cool little things here to sell we're also going to have a small supply of sewing notions and the notions that you would need for any of the other fiber arts that we're going to have it's not going to be a dedicated um, fabric store but we will have some things here for you so please come and I hope you like your bowl when it's finished. Have a nice night, and thanks again for joining me for a class. Anyway, bye.